Namaskar my friends and today I am back here with another Transformers movie review. Yes, the last time I did a Transformers review was I think The Rise of the Beast and then there was a trailer reaction of Transformers 1 that was uh, launched in space. So here I am. I just came back from the theater. I just came back from the cinema hall. I just finished watching the film and I'm here to give you my opinion on what the film is. Remember this is not a spoiler free review so if you haven't watched the movie yet stop the video right now go watch the film then come back and maybe you can agree with me on some points and maybe not agree with me on some points that's completely up to you but please go and watch the film first before you start watching this review so 3 2 1 here we go Transformers 1 takes place before the great war before optimus prime before the autobots before the decepticons before megatron it takes place at a time when optimus prime was known as orion pax yes orion pax has appeared in transformers prime earlier he has appeared so many times in the comics and here the origin story of orion pax is a little different from transformers prime and is a little different from a lot of other comics as well Megatron here is known as D16. Yes, D16 is straight away from the comics. Megatron here is a miner, so is Optimus Prime. They basically work in the mines of Cybertron to gather energon for their entire race. These bots who work as miners, they are not transforming transformers. Yes, they don't have a T-cog. They basically don't have the technology in their bodies to transform. So they are basically called cogless robots or cogless bots or cogless transformers right and that's because when they are born and we come to know this later in the movie uh basically uh when they are born their cogs are taken away right they are not born or rather they are not yeah, i think born is the right word here uh when they are born they do not have their cogs When this thing happened uh, a, a lot of people a lot of uh, transformers they could not transform so you know they were basically it, it's it's like a caste system and they are looked down upon right they are the workers they are the working class they are the you know miners you know kind of like the untouchables right? you know they are not allowed in a lot of places they have limited access to a lot of places and you know the normal thing that we uh, have humans Uh, have experienced in the past and are still experiencing now in some countries so uh, that's just that's just how it is so um optimus prime or orion pax in this case he still hasn't become optimus prime uh, he is a very uh, optimistic and somebody who is looking forward to a better future for cybertron and he wants to look for the matrix of leadership and here the matrix of leadership is not found the, uh, the matrix of leadership is lost and uh, in the first half of the movie this is what they try to focus on the matrix of leadership and then you know their adventures d16 and rand pax's adventures together and their racing in iacon 5000 race yeah that's the name of the race uh, that's because uh, it was named by sentinel prime sentinel prime is the only uh, surviving prime is the only prime who is still alive the rest of the primes are dead fighting on the surface of the planet of cybertron and uh, they're basically fighting the quintessons yes the quintessons are back the quintessons are basically they have uh, wrecked havoc on cybertron and the primes have all died fighting so it is sentinel prime who wants to get the matrix of leadership and uh, wants cybertron to uh, basically uh, be a very thriving uh, planet civilization kind of thing uh, but later we come to know and once uh, you know uh, elita one and bumblebee and you know optimus prime and uh, again i keep going back to optimus prime or ran packs once uh, these guys all meet and elita one is yeah i don't want to reveal too much but yes they meet elita one she is also in a very important role so is b as he always is b127 or uh, badassatron as he keeps calling himself every now and then um they basically get together they go looking for the matrix of leadership on the surface of the planet they meet 
alpha trion yes the alpha trion and alpha trion gives them their cogs they start transforming and then the story really opens up so the first half they're basically trying to develop the world they're trying to uh, establish this huge planet their people and what they're going through and blah 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 and uh, you know how the primes have have failed and how sentinel prime is the one now looking after them and uh, to mark uh, a special occasion you know a day dedicated to all the primes who have laid down their lives in protecting uh, Cybertron from the Quintessons. Uh, you know, you have the Iacon 5000 race. Now, Iacon later goes on to become the Autobot city and Kaon goes on to become the Decepticon city, but that is not shown in the film. I'm just you know, letting you know. So, yeah, it's, it's basically the whole world building, character building, and that's how it starts. That's what happens pretty much. But just before the interval, just before the intermission, when our heroes receive their cogs and when Alpha Trion tells them that Sentinel Prime is no hero, he was the one who betrayed us, he was the one who uh, basically shook hands with the Quintessons and uh, backstabbed every other Prime, killed every other Prime. Yeah, then it starts to get very grim, very dark. because, And it's not the typical uh, Transformers, Netflix, you know, siege darkness, but it gets dark, quite dark, if not very dark. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, they decided to go to war. And, uh, you know, what I liked about this film is they tried to establish every character, but at the same time, you know, you can actually see all the characters evolving at the same time. Optimus Prime was optimistic and, you know, Megatron uh, uh, D16 is slowly turning into the Megatron that we will soon know him to be or we have rather known for all these years ever since 1984 series. So, yeah, you can actually understand what is happening, uh, you know, within them, especially when Megatron comes to know that it was Sentinel Prime who had killed uh, his, his idol, his icon, his god, basically, Megatronus. And uh, yeah, Megatron just completely loses his mind and he wants to kill, that's right, kill Sentinel Prime. That's the first time we actually see uh, Megatron uh, Energon Thirsty, I mean, to kill, not bloodthirsty, but Energon Thirsty to kill. So uh, yeah, that part you know, you understand where Megatron's frustration and his anger comes from. And that is something which is, uh, you know, it kind of, as and when we move through the film, we understand why Megatron did what he did. Um, again, the second half of, of the film was fantastic. It was fantastically well made, in my opinion. Um, and uh, this uh, film was uh, much needed for the franchise as far as I'm concerned. This film was required for this franchise to move on because let's face it guys, as much as I loved Transformers Rise of the Beasts, it wasn't a very good film. Let's face it. Uh, as a fan, as a Transformers fan, I loved it. As a, a, a person who is a cine -goer, I loved it. But when you talk about... Um, Watching that film as a filmmaker or as a person who is a film enthusiast, it wasn't a very good film. So Transformers 1 really does well in rectifying certain mistakes that was made by the filmmakers who created Transformers Rise of the Beasts and, you know, other films like uh, The Last Night and uh, you know, the one before that, Age of Extinction, really did not do very well. D16, you know, in his quest for revenge, tries to kill Sentinel Prime and, you know, Oran Pack stops him, says that, hey, listen, you can't do this. You know, the betterment of Cybertron cannot start with the death of Sentinel Prime. And the entire population of Cybertron now knows about the betrayal of, of, uh, of Sentinel Prime because Oran Pax and his team make sure that, uh, you know, through Arachnid's memories, yes, Black Arachnia, Black Arachnid, she's here. She is very much here. She basically works for Sentinel Prime. And it's a kind of a giveaway very early in the film that, you know, when you have Arachnid, you know, it's never good news. So, you know, through Arachnid's memories, they played on the big screen for all the Cybertronians and they actually see Sentinel Prime confessing to uh, the fact that he 
was the one who killed all the primes and you know he uh shook hands with the quintessons and all the energy on that were being mined was basically being given to the quintessons so that uh, uh sentinel prime could wipe out his debt so the entire all the cybertronians know about this megatron is mad trying to uh again d16 is mad trying to kill sentinel prime and then he does fire a shot but Aranpax gets in the way and it hits him. It kills him. But here's the thing. This is where D16 actually turns into Megatron. He, Aranpax gets killed. I mean, he's already half dead and he's hanging off this ledge and uh, of this bridge, actually. And, you know, D16 grabs hold of his hand and says that, why did you do this? And he said that, don't do this. Rampax keeps telling D60, don't do this. And then D16's eyes turn red and he says, you know what, I'm done saving you. And he drops, yes, he drops a Rampax into the uh, unfathomable depths of Cybertron. And yeah, you have the likes of Soundwave, Shockwave, Starstream, um, you know, join Megatron and uh, join D16. And, you know, uh, D16 starts to... Uh, shoot out everything, shoot at everything, you know, he starts, starts killing all the followers of Sentinel Prime. Uh, Elite One and Bumblebee try to stop him, but it really doesn't work. Now, while this happened, uh, D-16 slowly transformed, you know, all his other body parts started coming on, his all armors started coming on, and he slowly became Megatron. He still did not announce himself to be Megatron, but you knew it is Megatron. D16 is gone. It's dusted. It's killed. Finished. The moment he let go of, of, of uh, Orion Pax's hand. Now, here's the thing. Orion Pax actually falls into the depths of Cybertron to Primus himself. And as you know, the matrix of leadership was bestowed upon Optimus Prime. And this is where I screamed like a little girl because it was awesome. When Matrix of Leadership is given to him, I'm the one in the hall that's going, woo, like this. And, you know, everybody else, they were looking at me like, okay, what's wrong with this guy? Yes, I'm a Transformers fan. I'm a crazy Transformers fan. I couldn't help it. And out comes Optimus Prime. And then the one that you want, it is Megatron versus Optimus Prime. And there's bashing and, you know, the fight scenes, the action scenes are awesome in this film throughout. I absolutely loved it and they nailed it, the filmmakers. And towards the end, obviously, uh, Prime gets his Energon axes and he cuts off Megatron's cannon. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's awesome. And while Optimus Prime is rebuilt by Primus with the Matrix of Leadership, Megatron does the unthinkable. He actually takes Sentinel Prime and tears him open in half. That's not a very PG-13 thing to show. I mean, this film is a PG-13 film, but, you know, uh, I was like, I was like, oh, okay, oh, okay. Is, is that, is that PG-13? I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, it was, it was amazing. And uh, that's basically my review of the film. Uh, I personally thought it's a very good film. Uh, if you can get to the first half, just before the first half ends, basically. From the, from the interval or the intermission to the end of the film, it's fantastic. It is very, very well made, in my opinion. And a much needed film for the franchise, as I've already mentioned. Uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, this film was very, very important for this franchise. It has saved the franchise in a way. Because I know Rise of the Beast is the second, next part to Rise of the Beast it's supposed to be a trilogy with, uh, you know, um, uh, the director, uh, Stephen Capel Jr. is going to bring in the G.I. Joes into it. I don't know how they're going to do it, but G.I. Joes is a huge brand. It's a massive brand. There's some fantastic characters in there. I hope they are able to establish them well. But uh, this was basically the reviews for Transformers 1. The review for Transformers 1. Uh, if you haven't watched the film... I don't know why I'm talking about this right now. Uh, please go ahead and, uh, you know, watch this film again if you have already watched it. I plan to watch it again. I really liked it. And uh, now, the question, will I be reviewing? Yes, you haven't seen too many reviews of these new 
you know products put out by Hasbro or the third or any third party company uh, when it comes to Transformers one. Um, now that I watched the film, I would love to review them. Uh, just that you know, and I'm going to be very honest. Uh, look, I am not a big YouTuber, right? I don't even have a thousand subscribers as yet, and I really hope I do get to it because uh, the funds generated through YouTube really helps in getting all these figures. Uh, and budget is a problem. Budget really is a problem. Hence, I have not been able to review anything as yet. But I do plan to review. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, make sure that uh, you guys can get a good review. I do plan on reviewing the Studio Series 86 Prime. But we'll see where we are with that. I still haven't received my uh, order notification from Big Bad Toy Store. So I'm waiting for that. So yeah, well, if you have liked this review, do give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, uh, you know, we'll bring you more reviews your way. And also, please do let me know if you're liking the new unboxing, the story-based unboxing that I'm trying to do. Uh, let me know if you like it, if you hate it, if you want me to change it, let me know. Uh, because at the end of the day, this channel is there because of you people. It exists because of you people. So do let me know. If you would like some changes there. Till then, please take very good care of yourselves. Please take very good care of your families. Enjoy your collections. Keep collecting. And always remember, till all are one. Thank you so much for joining me today.